Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. He's worthy. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, uh, God, I just love how God just, just comes into this place and speaks to us, Gary and God. And, and He comes in here and we just let God be God. Amen. That, that's the biggest thing. Uh, a lot of people will be like, man, what's going on in there? Amen. That's a crazy bunch of people. I tell you what, right now, I'd rather be thought as a crazy bunch of people, but on my way to heaven. Amen. Uh, as on my way to hell, sitting in the church pew, cold and indifferent towards God. Amen. Uh, tonight, I know I, glow, I serve a God. Amen. That's real. He's alive and he's large and he's in charge tonight, amen. Uh, he takes second to nobody, amen, in, in my life. And I hope uh, that he takes second to nothing in your life. Uh, God has been speaking to me the last few days uh, about the mark. And I really didn't understand until Kimberly brought a book into me today. And she said, somebody handed me this book. And right on the front of it, it said the mark. And it was talking about the mark of the beast. But what God had been speaking to me about the mark, uh, what are you aiming for, amen? What are you doing in this life? Just like Sister Jew, uh, we all say, that we want a deeper, closer walk with God. Uh, but when the rubber meets the road, we say, now wait a minute, God. Now I just don't know about all that. Uh, just like whenever a uh, 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 Christian, that skit she's got that talks about that guy uh, wanting him to come in there and make him and mold him and God walks in there with a chisel and he sets it on his arm and he's fixed to hit it with a hammer and he says, now wait a minute. Let's think about this. Or Mark, what do we? I, I began to ponder on Brother Gillis what he was talking about. Uh, that Paul, when he talked about that mark that he was pressing toward, what what are we pressing toward? Are we pressing toward a nicer vehicle? Are we pressing toward worldly fame? Are we pressing toward uh, things that the world says that we need? Are we pressing toward uh, that uh, that mark? Amen. Are we pressing toward uh, seeing heaven as our home? What are we pressing for? Paul said, "I press toward the mark." Of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus, Amen. Amen. The mark that's in the the the, the, the mark that's uh, the high calling in in Christ Jesus tonight. What are you pressing for? You trying to make you you putting on the facade? You you putting on something? Putting on uh, tight that tie just a little bit tighter? Uh, polish him shoes just a little bit? Now. Who are you trying to impress tonight? Who, who who are you putting on? Who who are you who are you putting on a show for, young people? I always tell my kids that, you know, and you've heard me say this probably a hundred times, but I believe this. You only have one person to please in this life, and that's God. Amen. Young people, if you're pleasing to God, your parents ain't going to have a problem with you. Amen. Amen. I, I learned that kind of the hard way. They, they was playing a song down there uh, whenever I went to that football game the other night. It always brings back a memory. That, that song that's playing by ACDC, that's playing, it said, Hell's Bells. I remember sitting right beside my, my brother, and I had the headphones on, and I was just young, I was probably eight, nine years old, and I had them headphones on, and that, that dong started coming on in them earphones. And I started singing that song out loud. You know, I don't have but one person to please in this life, but I tell you right now, I had a mama that lined my brakes if I needed it. And I began to sing that song. And all of a sudden, I got about two words into it. My brother, he tried to warn me. He said, you better hush. I had them headphones on. I'd just get louder. And by the time he hit that note, me, I let her rip. Son, she come with a back cam. What? <laughs> and I didn't sing it no more. I didn't sing it no more. Sometimes, that's the way we are. I, I seen a guy today that said that, uh, he, had, he had put a picture up and it said that God has to shepherd me like this sometimes. And this guy was headlong in a hole. It's covered by grass. And he's got this thing by the feet. And you see him start to pull it out of this hole. And when he gets it all the way out of that hole, it was a sheep. And the caption said, sometimes God or Jesus has to shepherd me like this. Sometimes I'm running off and running headlong into a hole. 
And I'm like, man, that was camouflage because I looked at the details. It was camouflage. You would have never knew that hole was there. You know, and that shepherd would have never knew that sheep was there unless he was watching. You don't think God's watching? He's watching you. All the time. Young people, he's watching you. No matter what you do in secret, no matter what you do in the dark, amen, God is watching. He said everything is naked and open in his sight. So you can't hide nothing from God. You may hide it from the preacher. You may hide it from me. You may hide it from mom and daddy for a little while. But it doesn't matter about us. It ultimately matters what does God think. What is God seeing when He looks into your life? What is He seeing? Are you pressing to? Are you trying to gain more things? Are you trying to get more stuff? Are you trying to impress everybody? Are you trying to make everybody happy? What mark are we pressing toward? Paul said he pressed toward the mark of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. In Philippians 3 and 13, it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I began to sit in here and think the other night, Brother Marcus, when you said that, if there be one, if there be one, the most important thing that I think that I can do in my life is to take somebody else to heaven with me. That's probably the most important thing that you could ever do in life is to witness to somebody about Jesus and have them to confess Him as their Lord and Savior and give their heart to Him. I think that would be the most important thing that you would ever gain is winning somebody else to Christ. I think there's nothing else. You you can stand in the pulpit and you can preach a sermon 152,000 times. You can sing the best song. But I think if you win somebody's heart to Jesus... Is the most important thing that you could ever do in this life. Not, not get another pair of shoes, not, not drive a fancy car, not live in a big house, not have four wheelers and boats and things like that. Not having those things, but witnessing to somebody and winning their soul to Jesus. That one, you know, that spoke volumes to me. Jesus said if there would have been one, he said I would have went and hung and I would have died still. When Marcus spoke that the other night, you know, I, I never had a, I guess, I guess it became a rhema word to me. It became alive in me, Brother Gillis, one. All those people we say, well, that, 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 well, they'll probably never, oh man, them people's too far gone. I'm not even going to go speak to them. You know, I, I'm not, hey, I'm, I'm bad, I, I was, I was once bad to do that. Be like, just brush people off because, man, I, them people, well, they, they ain't going to listen to nothing I got to say. If God leads you to speak to those people, Because he's concerned about everyone. God said it was his will that what? None should perish, but that all should come to repentance to know him. All of them. Everybody. That that don't mean we can be selective. And we can pick out who we want to talk to. Amen. We, 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 We can't be selective. And we can't say, well, I think I'll go here today or I'll go there. If God leads you just like Jonah when he led him to Nineveh, he didn't want to go to Nineveh. You know why he didn't want to go? Because he didn't think those people deserved the mercy of God. He didn't think those people deserved what God had for him. But what happened to Jonah? Huh. Said that God created a great fish. And he was swallowed up. It was three days in the fish's belly. And then he was vomited up on dry land. How would you like to be thrown up, Gary? That'd probably, that'd probably be pretty bad, wouldn't it? But I can tell you right now that if you don't, if you don't heed to the... I mean, that's why I've, I've, I've missed it sometimes and not went to that person. We've all missed it. We've all missed it from that. But I can tell you, that's what, that feeling that you get. I don't know if you ever... I get if I know that I've missed it, Gillis, when I know I didn't say something that I should have said or didn't go when I should have went. That's what it was like for Jonah to be vomited up. On dry land. Because it's an icky feeling. It's like, God, just please give me another chance. And that's the way Jonah, Jonah went to Nineveh. He preached salvation to those people. We are to go. And that's what we're called to do. That's the mark that we're to be pressing toward. It's not only to make it ourselves, but to take somebody else with it. I'm telling you right now that He's coming. We all know that He's coming. We all believe in that He's coming. 
But so sad in the church today that we have that mentality, my four and no more. We're only concerned about ourselves. It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Whether you like it or whether you don't. If they don't smell good, if they don't look good, if they don't talk good, if God leads you, go spread God's word with them. Press toward that mark. That's what God's called us to do. God has called us to be the light. We are His hands. We're His feet. We want to talk about that deeper walk like Jewel was talking about. We all want to say that, hey, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then all of a sudden we come in and come in like a comet. And then we fizzle out. Blowing and going. I know that God has dealt with me on several different occasions. But never like this about being the one. You know, we've all heard the scripture, he'd leave the 99 to find the one. But think about it. He would have left everybody in here that's all lily white and squeaky clean and saved and on our way to heaven. He would have left all, he he would have left us to go out there and find the one. And we think, well, bless God, who do we think? I mean, we need to humble ourselves. (laughs) And, and, and forget about who we think we are. And allow God to remove the blinders from our eyes and to show us who we truly are, that we're nothing without Him. Brother Gillis, I, I am a man most miserable without God. I can tell you right now that I can, I, 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 I can watch, uh, they can play football 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, but if I didn't have God, I'd be a man most miserable. I like to eat. There ain't nothing satisfies like the word. Nothing sad. I'm a pecan pie fan. I love pecan pie, Brother Gills. They say that the Baptists, that they like, uh, what, what is it, banana pudding and fried chicken. Ain't that right, Gills? Ain't that what is that? Banana pudding and fried chicken. I guess the Pentecostals, I always said that I like pork chops and pecan pie. That, that, yeah, and Gary said he likes it all. It don't matter to him. A Baptist Coastal. Amen. Gary's Baptist Coastal. He'll take a little bit of all of them. But the Bible says there's neither Greek nor Jew, neither male nor female, white, black. It don't matter. We're all the children of God. All of us. We're all the children of God. And so God is our, uh, we're, we're, the, we're the hands and feet of Jesus now that he has ascended to the Father. I mean, I want you to get a revelation that you are the hands and the feet of Jesus. Where you walk, be a light to someone. I see so, there's enough negativity in the world that I don't see how anybody would ever get out and that's lost and don't know Jesus. I don't even know how they survive. There's so much negativity so much oppression that tries to, I mean, everywhere you turn, on every corner. I, I watched people today that stood in line, and when they opened the doors to this store, they just trampled one another to get inside. Yes. I seen people in fist fights over a television. I seen a woman on the video, Brother Gillis, steal a baby doll from a child. Just so she could buy it. Terrible place in which we're... These people, they need Jesus. That baby doll can't get them to heaven. They need the blood of Jesus. Amen. They need, to, they need the light to be shown in their life. They, they need to be opened up to the light. And we are the ones. To show them that light. To press toward that mark. That's what Paul was talking about. That mark is to lead people to salvation. That mark... Is to take somebody else with you. That mark is to make heaven our home. Our, that mark is to see Jesus face to face. I want to see him, Brother Carl so bad, I can't stand it. Amen. I see all these kids up here dancing around, waving them flags, and, 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 and it kind of looks organized. What do you think? Man, there's going to be kids waving flags running around everywhere in heaven. <laughs> running around the throne, bouncing up and down in the kingdom of God. I can see them running through the fields. Of glory, waving flags and banners, hollering Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. Amen. <laughs> Praising God and worshiping Him. I want to see Him so bad. 
I want to see him with everything that's